Hello, everyone. We're about five minutes away from start time here, so uh, we'll make sure to get started right on time. Uh, but for now, we'll just be in silence mode for the next three to four minutes. Looking forward to starting with you guys. All right, I see that we still have a few people joining, so we'll wait to start exactly on the 11 o'clock hour out here on the West Coast, 2 p.m. hour out on the East Coast. All right, we've reached that witching hour. I want to welcome everyone to Vicon's VAX Access Control 2.9 webinar. We're so very pleased that you could join us today. Your hosts today are myself, Frederick Wahlberg, and my colleague, Hui Le. Let's have a look at the agenda for today. The importance of access control and proper door management in today's world is more prevalent than ever. Whether you need a single button lockdown or the ability to give access rights to the local authority for faster response, we have designed and optimized our offering to best fit today's needs. Now, looking at the people that are registering, I see that we have a solid mix of attendees today. So we wanted to start by going over the system components to give you a brief overview of everything that we have to offer in the access control world. 
we'll take a deeper dive into what makes the hardware unique. We'll quickly cover the ways in which you can install our controllers and readers, give you an idea of what you're getting with the VAC software, which will lead us nicely into our most recent feature updates in 2.9, which will be demonstrated by we. Now we'll leave our contact information at the end, but we'll also be sending out a short survey at the end where you can leave any questions and comments that you may have. You may also notice that there is a question tab on this GoToWebinar. You can ask any questions throughout the webinar and we'll be jotting those down and make sure to get back to you uh, in a timely manner. Now our goal is very simple. We want the most functional and feature-rich access control system without making it a hassle to purchase or install. Vicon has factory certified servers that come with VAC software pre-installed, or you can simply install it on a standalone PC. We have a wide variety of controller options for doors and elevators, which we'll touch on shortly. Now you can manage unlimited sites and users with the software that we have. And really the nature of the unlimited users and activities makes for a very scalable and robust system. This is a product that can grow with you and will not handcuff you in the future. It'll really help keep the cost of ownership as low as possible. And one of the unique features is that we're able to purchase a door at your pace. There's no need to purchase more than you need at that time. Now VAX is a perfect fit for new installations and retrofits alike. Standard Wigan format allows for most retrofits to use existing hardware in place, saving you time and money. Now, it's pretty clear, 2017, we live in a mobile world. We have designed VAX with HTML5 web re responsive design. So no more pinching and zooming to fit your screen. Let's go get a brief overview of everything that we offer in the system. Here are some major differentiators in my mind. We have a thin client browser-based software and PoE-ready panels. We have a vast array of controllers, readers, and cards for a complete solution. We have full integration into several VMS manufacturers, including Valeris and Viconet VMS offered from Vicon. You can quickly scale up with a variety of expander options as well. And we have an embedded request to exit or rec motion sensor built right into the panel. We have a game-changing version of global linking. We will walk through that a little bit later today in today's demonstration. And we have competitive pricing that is the right fit for your customer. Now I wanted to start by taking a little bit of a closer look at the actual VAX controller. This is the unique over-the-door design that drastically reduces installation and service time. See that there's an onboard LCD and diagnostic screen it supports static and DHCP connection modes. You only need one server and there is no software needed to install. There's a fully distributed processing, meaning that the field controllers are not dependent on server operation. Now you'll also notice up in the right hand corner that there's a space there for flash memory. Now we can do up to 50,000 events stored on that flash memory. And as soon as it connects again, it auto updates to the host database once, it, once the connection is reestablished. One of the questions that we often get with this is, if the network connection does go down, will the card still work? And the answer is absolutely. This is a 500 milliamp available right at the door. It supports both electronic strike and mag locks through PoE. It's 12 volt power. And we can accept up to one amp of external power to power door strikes and mag locks. It supports in and out readers uh, and the configuration of those. As you can see on here, there are four digital inputs that are fully configurable. Now this image shows the common user case, but it can also be any combination that you want. Uh, if you want to have four contacts, the one door or two doors, uh, the way it shows right there, you can do it the way you'd like to do it. Now what makes this unique is that yes, it can go above the door and you can edit the panel straight from the controller interface. You have everything that you need on this panel to go above that door. It only takes one person to program the controller on site. 
there's really no need for a second person back at the central server location, which is pretty unique to us, we feel. That diagnostic screen has the IP address, the server address, all the diagnostic controls that you have, and it also comes, of course, with a cover, either in black and white to match the interior of where you might be installing this. That cover is also tamper-proof, so you get a very audible beep if somebody is messing with that. Now, we're aware that there's quite a few retrofits out there, which means that we have it in the traditional home run install available as well. Now, you can fit up to four of our controllers in a traditional can, looking a lot like that. We offer our controllers in a one and two door format, so you can have up to eight doors in our traditional UL rated enclosure. Our IO boards are meant to fit into this traditional can as well. And like I mentioned, this is a perfect for retrofits. It has a smaller footprint than the traditional controllers. And one thing that's been asked about quite a bit, and we're very proud to be able to release this in December, is that we'll have the traditional non-POE using external power supply and battery backup available come December. You'll see that the image there shows what the new board looks like and also shows that the battery fits very nicely into our UL rated can as well. Now the other way this fits is right above the door. I wanna talk a little bit about the motion sensor or the request to exit that's right in there. The image on the left is the traditional uh, sensor that's integrated right into the device. It's a PIR sensor. And this PIR sensor is fully configurable from within the software to adjust the sensitivity. The left side is what comes standard out of the box. 99% of the time, if you're installing it above the door, there's no need to configure the sensitivity, but it is something that you can do. The image on the right is an actual customer of ours that used it as a retrofit and they did adjust it because it was not right above the door. So it's kind of a unique thing that we can do and it will fit into, again, both a retrofit or a new Greenfield install quite nicely. Let's talk a little bit about the software and how we designed that and what it is that you get with that. The system was really designed to be efficient, flexible, and user-friendly, but it's also powerful, robust, and a product that scales really well. Here are some of the features that are unique to VAX when coupled with the ease of use and true component flexibility. First of all, you get an SQL database. It's powerful and secure, and it's included with the VAX product, so there's no need to purchase a license for it. Talked about this a little bit already, but HTML Five enabled web responsive design. You can access VAX through any device, PC, monitor, laptop, smartphone, or tablet, and you can do it all without having to pinch and resize constantly. Advanced SSL encryption. It protects your data. Talked a little bit about this already, but the flash memory that's on there, 50,000 events can be stored per controller. Now, many of our competition out there store maybe five to 10,000. So uh, some say maybe we overdid it here, but it's a great way uh, and has proved reliable throughout. Uh, and on this flash memory, if it loses connection to the server, once it's connected again, it'll dump all that cache storage into the server again, and you're up and running, no problem. And again, the cards will, will continue to work if there were a reason for you to lose connection. Multiple credentials per user. What does this mean? You can create one user record, and that one user record can have unlimited credentials to that particular record. Now, when it comes to the flexibility, you also have multiple privilege groups. And what does this mean? The multiple privilege groups given by a defined collection of doors, meaning create several rules of groups of doors you can have a user have access to several of those access privileges. We will go over that in the demo in a little bit here. Just a brief overview of the actual topology of how we do this. Max can communicate to multiple Vicon camera systems throughout the LAN and WAN. 
talked a little bit about the VAX application server um, that it comes on, and this will save you bandwidth and network strain. Really a great basic overview of how VAX is connected and fully integrated with video systems throughout multiple sites. Again, connected to all your mobile devices. It can be viewed through anything that you'd like. And the two ways that we have it is either a single door controller or a two door controller, either above the door or again, back in the IT closet. One of the things that we feel is unique to us is port forwarding. Now our controllers call to the server instead of the other way around. So once you get up to say 50 plus cameras, one port forward instead of having to go to 50 different sites or each remote location. Again, reducing both time and strain uh, for installation and upgrades. Again, just a real brief overview of not only the topology, but the software and hardware and how we deliver it to you. Now, what you came here for is to see what's new with 2.9 and what are the features. There are several features and you can see that in the literature that we'll send out. However, the ones that we'll cover, sort of the major ones here, are a seamless integration with the Vicon Valeris VMS. Many of our customers today require both a VMS and a tight integration with an access control, something that we offer. Now, what does this integration mean? It's easy to program. It associates stores and events to specific cameras. You can view and playback video linked to events with a single click, and it really delivers a seamless single platform operation. There's advanced mapping functionality. Again, we will go over that. Time tracking report, unmanaged doors. And finally, the action control engine, or what we like to call ACE. And ACE is really our version of global linking. It's a high performance engine that allows simultaneous action executions and scalability that's limited really only by the hardware that it's running on. It's intuitive, it's easy to use, it's an action plan editor, allows you to complete, complete or create complex action plans in mere minutes. And we have engineers on site as well. So if you have any, what you might consider strange needs out there, please reach out to us. Our engineers would love to try to solve that problem. Now you can mix and match over 40 customizable actions to create a complex branching action plan to meet your business needs. Now, what does this include? It includes HTTP requests, door overrides, text messaging, and email actions. It's a highly flexible action plan that allows for operations with little programming or scripting knowledge needed. Flexible trigger engine allows you to trigger action plans from door input, output, uh, output state changes, or trigger action plans upon scheduled times. Now, that's a mouthful. What does that actually mean? in the real world? Well, we are involved in several different verticals that are deploying the ACE or action engine as we speak. So I wanted to go through just a couple of real world scenarios here. In the industrial vertical, we have a customer that basically required that we, they wanted the lights to be turned on if there was somebody in their warehouse. So this is a busy warehouse that wants to let crane and forklift operators know that there are persons inside the warehouse. There's a light visible from anywhere in the warehouse. All entrances and exits have back-to-back -back readers. And by using ACE with anti-passback, we were able to turn the lights on and off based on the amount of persons inside the warehouse. Something that nobody else was able to deliver for them where we were able to do with simple scripting. VMS and access control integration is a huge deal in the education vertical. It's a space that we play in day in and day out. And obviously one of the big things that's being requested right now is a building with a uh, building wide lockdown. Now normally this might require hardware connections uh, <clears throat> between all the control panels, but they did a risk analysis and they decided to use the ACE engine. Now, using the action control engine, they were able to watch for triple swipes and duress codes at any reader uh, to perform the lockdown. And again, this was done with very simple scripting uh, with the help of some of our engineers. On the commercial side, what we had was a property manager 
in New York that wanted to further leverage the Valeris VMS integration by using the API with the action control engine to receive a snapshot of people as they were either granted access or denied access to a reader. Again, something that he didn't think that was going to be able to do, we were able to do through the action control engine. Now we have a long list of references that we can make available to you upon request. Again, I mentioned that we're going to have a quick survey. It will have a spot for you uh, to write any comment. Should you want that list, uh, please note, notify us in that, and we'll make sure to get it to you. But we also are available and have uh, examples both from ports and critical infrastructure, uh, as well as correctional facilities. But in the interest of time, I want to introduce my colleague, Huile who will now kind of walk you through all of these features and functionalities that I talked to you about today. We? Yes, thank you, Fred. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, what I'd like to do now is to introduce to you some of our new features that's uh, in our latest VAX 2.9 software, uh, namely things like integration to Valeris 1.2, interactive maps, uh, unmanaged doors, user time tracking report, and as Fred had just mentioned, our very powerful action control engine, what we call ACE, and this is a unique solution to global linking. So let's go start off with our integration to Valeris. Right now what you're seeing here is our Valeris 1.2 software. From this Valeris VMS, we can directly access VAX by clicking on the VAX button at the top. And this will launch a browser that's going directly to our VAX web server. Not only are we accessing VAX through Valeris, but remember that we have the integration that we can tie cameras in from Valeris to VAX. So let's see how we do that. We can go down here to the hardware portion and click on camera systems. And I've added the Valeris server here. And very easy to do. All you need to do is click add, name the server, type in the address of the server, and the username and password for that server. Once you've done that, then you'll be able to see the cameras that are coming from the VMS itself. So these are the actual cameras, and actually these are recorded video clips that we have inside of the Blair's VMS software right now. What you can do from here is check off the cameras that you want to be able to use in VAX. And what I mean by use is in VAX, we're able to associate cameras to doors and with that association, you can invoke an action when something happens at that door. So let's see how we do that association of door to camera. So again, we go back down to the hardware section here, and we click on doors. And I'll go to the doors that I have on my system today, which is the Vicon lobby door. And I click on camera association, and I see the list of cameras that I've chosen to use in VAX, and now I can select, and I've already selected this, and associated that camera to door. So any doors that you have in VAX, you can associate a camera to that door. Now let's see what happens. We can set a condition for that camera to pop up. In this case, I've set a condition for any time somebody reads a card through the door, video will pop up, so I'm going to have a card read. So you see the monitoring on the right side gives us the message that a certain person has gone through the door and you can see associated video that we just did in the door association pop-up. So as you can see, it's very easy for us to quickly tie in our VMS to 
VAX and be able to use the cameras from our VMS into VAX. I'd like to also mention that not only are we able to use Valeris, but we are compatible with various other VMSs as well, including BikeNet, Milestone, Exact, and Digital Watchdog. The next feature I'd like to talk about is our newest feature in 2.9, which is our interactive maps. So this is a very modern and flexible HTML5 interface that's supported through any web browser and mobile device. We have a drag and drop designer that allows us to place any VAX objects such as doors, cameras, inputs onto maps and be able to view them and interact with these elements. So let's see how we do that. The first thing we want to do is go down to the system menu here under map configuration and we'll go ahead and click map configuration and these are some maps that I've already imported into the system and I'll just show you how we can do that. You can just click add, name the map, choose the partition, that's the area that the doors belong to and then you can choose browse into and import images. The images that we support for maps include TIFF, PNG, JPEG images. So you have a couple of options. And you can import as many maps as you'd like. So here I've added five maps into the system. Once I've added the map, inside a specific map, I can also define adjacent maps. So if I click on the adjacent maps tab here, I can choose which maps are in certain directions relative to the map that I'm choosing now. So I have north, east, south, west, above and below. So now that you've added the maps, now it's time to use the maps. and I'll go to the map menu that I've already created here. And these are the maps that are now available inside VAX. To use them, you first just click on the map. And if you'd like to choose several maps, you can do that as well by clicking on the Add tab or the New tab up here and then adding more maps. So at any time on your dashboard, you can interact with multiple maps. So let's take a look at how we're able to place different VAX components onto the maps itself. In the, on the left here, you'll see the available VAX components, including doors, cameras, inputs, areas, and actions. This is from the Action Control Engine, and I'll mention more about this later. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and click Edit, and we're now able to click on an icon and drag the icon to the map. So I'm going to add a couple of doors here. And I've already added a couple of cameras, but I'll add another camera here. And again, we can also place inputs and outputs that you can be able to interact with on the maps. So once I finish placing the objects on the maps, then now I can click on the view mode. And now I'm able to start clicking on icons and viewing the real time status. So let's start with door. So this is my lobby door. And you'll notice what we have is we have a card status at the top showing that the card is in card only mode. And we can see the name of the door. We can see the schedule. And then we can also see listing of the video that's associated with the door. Let me see if we can get a video here. And then we can also do things like 
invoke specific action to change the state of this door. So in the event of emergency, and we have a customer who has a large factory that they'd like to monitor different doors and gates, and they're actually placed these door controllers or read, readers and controllers at gates where a customer comes in, and their employees would read their card at the gate, which would open the gate itself. If a guest comes in, then the guard's able to click on the door, see the video coming from, in this case, from the gate, and then if they'd like, they can override the controls. For example, they can do an unlock, which now unlocks the door, or if they need to lock down, they can place the door, in this case the gate, in lockdown mode. If we click on resume, then it'll go back to the previous schedule, and the schedule right now is always card access, which means that you need a card to access the door. Our customer loves this function, namely for the ease of use, for the simple colors, the visual cues that you have, so you can see that the doors have different colors depending on the status, and this is a very easy and quick way for guards to be able to see a status of the door and invoke actions to change the condition of the doors. Again, with the camera icons, we can go ahead and click on the cameras and see the video coming from that camera itself, and we have access to both live as well as playback, so we can also choose a playback time from the video. So as you can see, this is a very interactive functional map, and this is quite easy to use. So the next thing I'd like to talk about is unmanaged doors. So unmanaged doors, we have customers, namely a factory that has many doors, and they have readers on some of the doors that they want restrict access to, but they also have doors that they don't have reader cards, but they still want to monitor those doors to see when the doors are open and closed. So we're able to do this through what we call unmanaged doors, where we can t tie a door contact into one of our I.O. boards. Let me show you what our I.O. board looks like. So this is our VAX I.O. controller connected to a VAX I.O. board. From the I.O. board, in software, we can configure that I.O. board for specific inputs and the inputs here, as you can see, I'm choosing one panel that has eight inputs, and I can tie that input to a door contact of a specific door. So this one panel, I can accommodate up to eight doors. So this is an easy way for us to add these door contacts and treat them as doors in VAX. So I'll show you how this looks in VAX. So with the door contacts, I'm now going to open this one unmanaged door. And you can see the status change from the door open, door closed. And again, we're able to associate video camera to that door. Not only can you see live transactions through that door, but we're able to open up a report and you can see that we have a extensive menu of different types of reports. So what I'm going to do is I can click on door activity and I can choose my specific door and in this case it's called the south exit. This is the unmanaged door. I can choose a time, start time and end time of when I would like to run this report. And now you can see the activities coming from these. You can also click on video 
camera association to this door. And now you can also see the video that was associated to that event at that time. So through the report mechanism, it's very easy for you to track the doors and also pull up video that's associated door in the case you want to follow any kind of event. The next feature I'd like to talk about is our time tracking. So time tracking allows us to be able to determine the total number of hours a day that an individual was within an area. So we can define an area with VAX using a couple of readers that are going into the area and readers going out to the area. So what I'm going to choose is I've saved some pre-reports that selected specific in reader. In this case, they're going in through the Vicon lobby door and they're exiting through exit lobby. And these are again two readers and they could be on the same door, one going in, one coming out. And I can choose again the start and stop date of when I'd like to find this report. And there's my report. So I can see that there's a couple of card holders here and you can see the entry time, the exit time, and the total of amount of time that they spent in that area. Again, we have a customer that why they use this to be able to track employee times, how much time they spend in different areas of the building in a certain day. So this is a very useful way to track times for different uh, employees and other uses. So finally, what I'd like to do now is talk about our action control engine. So as Fred had mentioned, we have, this is our solution to global linking. This is a very powerful way, flexible way for us to be able to allow a user to invoke different actions, multiple customizable actions based on a button that's pushed in VAX or for some, with using some kind of trigger like a door read or a panic button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce you to the menu and then I'm going to go through some real life cases that we had uh, customers who needed to address. So the first thing you do is go to the action plans menu and you can see some of the actions that I've already created. So I'll go ahead and click add and you can name your action. The plan type, the trigger and system. Trigger means that the way you're going to run this action is by a specific trigger such as a card read or a, a input. If we choose the system, then this makes this a simply a play button on the VAX dashboard that we can click on to invoke the action. So I'm just going to click on create as a system and I'll go into the action plan here. So as you can see here, these are a wide variety of actions that we can take on the system itself. Everything from door controls to floors, if we have elevator controls, which we support. We can set timers for specific events to occur to invoke an action. We can email. We can also play alarm sounds that are coming from our panels. We have over four, uh, 30 different pre-programmed sounds from our panels. And we can also send HTML commands directly to our VAX API to invoke an action, or you can also send API, uh, HTML commands to other systems as well. So I'll just give you a quick show of how we are able to add control. So I'm going to choose an override door. I'm choosing a specific door now. 
and I can have as many commands as I want. Not only can I have multiple commands, but I can choose a command, I can drag it over, and I can stipulate when this command will run. So, for example, I have an override door, and I can stipulate that if it fails or if it succeeds, then I can take the next action. In this case, I'm choosing an input. Now, right now, I don't have an input for this door, but this is an example of how we do it. So we can have branch commands of if and then to invoke multiple actions based on just one action plan. So let me give you an example of a real-life uh, customer case. We have a customer who wants to be able to upon a push of a panic button, change the card reader status from simply reading a card to not only reading a card, but also being uh, requiring the, the user to enter a PIN number on the card reader PIN pad. Not only do they want it to do that, but they also want it to be able to allow a police officer now access to the doors, again, using a PIN code. So this is the action that I've created called Lockdown Belling Campus. And in this action plan, just to briefly go over it, what we're doing is we're sending an HTTP request command to our VAX software to allow login. And then another request to be able to activate the credential for a police officer that we've programmed into the system and normally their condition is disabled but now we're able to enable their access through the pin code 1111 so this is the button that they'll push in this action we're also overriding the doors to again card and pin access and then we're also emailing a message out saying that the campus has been in lockdown through the panic button in initiation. So before the panic button was invoked, the normal situation was that we have normal card read. Now I'm going to go ahead and press the panic button. And you can see the status changed, and it shows that the door has been overridden to current state is card and pin. So now the same users through this pin pad, now they're required to actually enter a pin to access that door. And remember that we also now gave the police permission to go through the doors, again using their specific pin number, 1111. And we applied, we enabled that action again through this action engine plan. So as you can see, this is a very powerful and very flexible in terms of the actions that we're able to take inside the system. Another scenario that we have is we had a factory customer again that has guards going into the building at night. And they're required to go through specific doors and exit specific doors in a certain amount of time. So we've created a action here called guard tour where we can wait for a reader read at a specific reader and then we can do a wait which means that now we can invoke how much time the user the guard is allowed to be in the area before they need to do a card read through another door. So right now we've set it as an example just for 10 seconds. But normally again, this is the time that you would, uh, the, set, the amount of time you set is based on how much time that you expect the guard to be in, in a certain area before they exit through a door. So I'll go ahead and invoke an action here where I'm going through one door with the guard. And now 
if the guard doesn't go to the second door within 10 seconds, I get an action message that says guard did not make it to the other entrance. So again, this is a very flexible and easy way for us to be able to specify and require a user to go through certain doors, allow a certain time for them to be spent in that area before they need to badge out. Finally, I'd like to show one last uh, real life case where a customer wanted to be able to use their card on certain times to lock down a building by being using their card and using our what we call triple swipe action. So triple swipe is swiping your card at a reader three times. So we created an action plan to allow that and we called it lockdown all site. So again in this action we just override the door to lockdown. That's in the action plan and we go to the action trigger and the trigger in this case is a reader and they're triple swiping and the specific user who's going to be able to do this is Alicia Parker and the action plan that they're invoking is lockdown all site. So let's see how this works. So I'm going to use Alicia's card. So I swipe the card on the specific reader three times and now door is in lockdown mode. So now that the door is in lockdown, you'll notice that people are not allowed access, denied access through these doors. So this is just a few examples of the many things that we can do using the action control engine. This will now conclude this portion of our presentation today. So right now we'd like to go ahead and invite you to give us any questions that you'd like to, uh, if you have. So I'm going to pass it back to Fred now. All right. You guys see my screen all right? We? Uh, hold on a sec here. I will pass the screen back to you. Hmm. Did you pass it? All this technology, and it's always the screen passing that gets us. There you go. Thank you. All right, we've come to the conclusion here. Hopefully that was a great overview for you guys. I wanted to leave at least this slide. Uh, there are multiple ways in which you guys can contact us. And again, the survey will be going out. Um, but we have time for about four or five questions. Now throughout Lee's demonstration, I was also answering some questions live. So it looks like we were able to get to most of the questions. If you have any additional questions, feel free to answer those inside the survey that we'll be sending out afterwards that will take you roughly four to five uh, minutes, if not less. We've also recorded this webinar and we'll make it available as a link on our website. Make sure to contact your local regional sales manager or rep for pricing or product. And uh, we'll thank you very much for joining us today.